going to sing, We're Marching to Zion. We're Marching to Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And us around the throne. And us around the throne. And oh, we're marching to Zion. And beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching up. What to Zion, the beautiful city of God? Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fair world on high to fair world world on high and all will march to Zion and beautiful beautiful Zion will march in up what to Zion the beautiful city of God Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to each of you and also our brothers and sisters uh, at home and those uh, are in tune with the uh, YouTube. We're glad to bring some announcements to you concerning the congregation uh, and also uh, uh, special prayer requests. That's why I'm in front of you this morning. I would like to begin with the prayer requests uh, we have, uh, also keep in mind now, sometimes these prayer requests come in a little late, a week, 10 days or so, but please understand that the leadership is aware of these prayer requests, meaning that we have already prayed over these requests for you and acknowledging your trials and tribulation. So you may be just getting it today, but we got it a week ago. Amen? Amen. Now, also, with that said, I would like to, uh, Jimmy and Cynthia, uh, uh, Scott, asking for prayer for their family. Amber Tamar, also uh, Lasagna, Lynette Howard, Jamie and Debbie Nolly, family. Uh, we have uh, Patterson, Quentin uh, Patterson and family. And we have uh, Terry Smith of the family uh, asking for prayer. And along with that, we also have Annie, uh, who uh, would like to, uh, like to uh, thank the church for your prayers during my surgery. And, um, and it went well. The surgery went well. Amen. So she's just rejoicing and come back and giving us the good news. Amen? Amen. Now, also, let's keep in mind that the Peters family is also asking for prayers, and Lewis and Lisa Deer asking for, for prayers. prayers. Donna, Donna and, uh, and uh, Delicia is asking for prayer, and Kiki Jones and the family is asking for prayers. And she also asked myself and my family and my father-in-law pray for them as well. We have Sister Johnny Boy asking for prayer, and Kathy Rich is asking for prayer, and also we have Sandra Visa asking for prayer. So keep these members in your prayers, please, throughout this week as well. And give them a call if you can, if the opportunity permits. And we also have Sister Sherry Smith lost her family member to COVID-19. And Brother Ron Swint asked prayers for his sister who has cancer. Uh, and that's uh, Delores Glover. And she lived there in Sweetport. And I had an opportunity to meet her uh, uh, about five or six years ago or so. And uh, I had a great conversation with uh, Mrs. Glover. Uh, we had a lot in common. I worked in the chicken business and so she was in the chicken business for a number of years for churches. <laughs> and so we had a great opportunity. To, uh, I really enjoyed visiting with her. And also uh, Sister Shonda Robinson asking prayers for herself and the family. 
She's working with the COVID-19 patient at the VA hospital. Yeah, right. So continue to keep her and the family in your prayers as well. Yeah. So uh, yeah. this is a serious thing. And also, Brother Hurd not feeling well today, so please continue to pray for him and his family. We have uh, Doris Johnson. She's a librarian at, uh, for Southwestern Christian College for a number of years. And uh, Brother, we're going to take this. She passed, right? Yeah. Funerals yeah. today. Yeah, funerals today. So please keep that family in your prayers as well. Now, also concerning the announcement of uh, uh, the leadership. I'm asking all the leadership is asking all Cliffview ladies to to by, by request by the leadership to attend a meeting at the church building here next Saturday, next Saturday, which is August the 22nd, at 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock. So please, if you can, be here at 11 o'clock on the 22nd uh, uh, before 11. Because the meeting was start at 11. This meeting is to share the, pro the project information concerning the church. Information will be given on church property, taxes, feasibility study, and development of the 64 acres. And give you some information on the village, the villages. So we like for each of you. And if there's a brother who did not, was unable to make it because he was sick last week, a couple weeks ago, you're free. Come on in. You know, we're going to distance you. We all will be distant. So please, if you were not able to attend that meeting, you come in. You're welcome. Because this is about the church. Not just the men, not just the ladies, but the church. Amen? Amen. I also want to share with you again, as a reminder, Brother Harry did a good job this last week, but I want to re reiterate this again because I received a phone call or two. I know one of the other elders or two have received phone calls as well concerning when we're coming back into the building. So I want to put a little more emphasis on this again today, and you will hear this throughout until we come back. Okay, the church leadership understand the need for our church family to assemble together again. Not being able to assemble together has been hard on all of our church members, and we understand that. The number of COVID-19 hospitalization and death are at a high, a record high. Leadership believe it is in the best interest of our members to continue online service on Sunday and Wednesday night. Brother Pastor did a fantastic, did a great job Wednesday night. I was able to see it all this time. Sometime a moment ago, but he did a great job Wednesday night. So tune in on Wednesday night with our new books. Amen. You'll enjoy it. You did a good job. Thank you, sir. And we are in prayer over decisions as to when we may be able to assemble together again. Members are encouraged to continue online service and to fellowship through email, phone calls, and social media. Please do so. Now, please continue to pray for our pandemic situation that God may heal this land and those affected by the disease. Now, Sometimes when God speaks to us in a mysterious way, we know this. So just stay at home. Just stay at home. If you go other places, that's fine. You got to go to Walmart. I heard that conversation, doctor business and other things. Sure. But we're not asking the church to go to Walmart at, at one time. But whatever you get at another congregation or Walmart, you get it here at the church too as well. Now, so, so just stay at home until that number go down. And the leadership will continue to pray on this situation. And what we're going to do as well, we have, uh, of course, you know, when we opened back up in the past, we had the uh, temperature. But at the same time, we have, we have compiled a, a uh, COVID-19 pandemic consent information that we're going to ask you to look over, to look over initially, so we can have it on file. We're not asking you to do it every Sunday, but when we come back, we're gonna ask you, please come in and do that. We try to be here a, uh, two or three minutes early. So we say, you know, of course, if the service is started at 10, try to get it at 9.45 so you can get all, uh, the information filled out, get the temperature check, and, uh, and look at the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic informed consent 
It's only about five, sixteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven things that you need to do and sign off on. Now, uh, with that said, I'm turn the service back over to the brother. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The scripture be taken from Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. I'll give you a moment to get it. And the word reads, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our, Father, our, and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Please prepare your minds for prayer. Let us together bow. Father, we come before you in down this way that we know how, God. We ask God that you would look down and you would forgive us of our sins by word, thought, and deed, omission, or commission. Anything, God, that would hinder this prayer we ask that you would move it out the way. First of all, God, we want to thank you for being a loving God, a long-suffering God, a patient God, a God that is able to look beyond our faults and see our needs. And God, we need you now more than ever before. Lord, we ask that you would look down and, and have mercy on the world, God. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to let your love be shown in the church and, and God as we go through this pandemic and realizing God that your will must be done and, and Lord we pray for America in the midst of all of this strife and racial division and everything God that is contrary to what you would have us to be and Lord we ask that you will the America will realize that this is not a democracy, this is a theocracy where you are in control. And Lord, we pray that you look down and have mercy on the, the land, and we pray for the church, Clifford Church of Christ. We pray for the leadership, God. We pray that you would continue to strengthen them and continue, God, to allow the Holy Spirit to lead them and as they lead the church and Lord we pray that the Holy Spirit would have his way and all that it needs to be done for this congregation and Lord we pray for uh, the man of the hour that will come with the word God we pray you'll bless him with power preaching power Lord we pray for all those that have lost loved ones and we pray for the Johnson family uh, Mrs. Uh, Doris Johnson long time Librarian at Southwestern Christian College. Bless that family, God, in this their hour of bereavement. And we thank you for this day, God, for this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And God, we pray now that, that you will hear this prayer and will empower the Holy Spirit. We ask this, this prayer will be heard in the powerful, wonderful name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for this opportunity. In the name of Christ, we pray that the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. 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 We're going to see hard fighting soldier. Oh, I'm the hard fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. Oh, I'm the hard fighting soldier. The service that I give Well, I can walk right Talk right Sing right Pray right I'm more than that Oh, I can walk right Talk right Sing right Pray right I'm more than that Oh, I can walk right Talk right Sing right Pray right Keep 
on bringing us to Jesus. Just keep on bringing us to Jesus. Just keep on bringing us to Jesus and I. The service and that I did. Good morning, Cliffview family and uh, online community. We are glad that you are here with us uh, this morning. We always say that there are several venues that you can uh, participate in and watch, but we are glad that you have made it our way uh, to worship with us this morning. And those who have become a part of our virtual worship service from far, far away, we are glad that you are here with us this morning. You heard the scripture read by uh, Brother Greg from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And this morning, we're going to talk on the subject, God takes our worry. God takes our worry. I've been, for the past couple of weeks, uh, paying attention to uh, Muhammad Ali. I, I know he's not alive, but I, I'm talking about those old videos of Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali was a wordsmith. He had the ability to paint a picture, draw you in, and understand his point, thereby winning you over with his words. Uh, uh, he would say something. He was talking to one of the commentators, and he told the commentators, he said, every time you open your mouth, you should be arrested for air pollution. <laughs> he said, ooh, I'm fast. He said, I'm so fast, I can play ping pong with myself. <laughs> Muhammad Ali said, I'm so fast. He said, I'll turn out the lights and be in the bed before it gets dark. One little boy, he was messing with the little boy, and the little boy punched him in the face, and Muhammad Ali said, Woo, that was fast. He said he was so fast, he hit me before God knew it. <laughs> and then they were talking about Leon Spinks. He said, Leon Spink can't beat me. He said, he's so dumb, they took his license, and he walked into a pole. But nonetheless, he was a wordsmith, and he was funny, but he would draw you in by what he was saying. And even if you didn't think he could win the fight, even if you didn't like him, he won you over with his words. That's, that's the idea today. The idea this morning is that God takes our worry through his word. God possesses the ability to draw us in with his word. I'm talking about scripture now and to help us understand and change our hearts. That's the idea. God uses verbiage to take our worry. Right here from the passage, worry will not get the best of us. I have two points for you this morning. Let's jump right into point number one as we talk about God takes our worry. Point number one, God gives us assistance. Right from the text, point number one, God gives us assistance. Now let me go ahead and tell you what I'm going to tell you, then I'll come back and tell you what I already told you. Okay. What am I trying to tell you? God gives us assistance through his word, and I'm going to come back and tell you that again. Let's look at verse 16 as we talk about point number one, God gives us assistance. Watch what it says. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace. Now watch this word comfort. This word comfort, assistance, or encouragement can be used here. Depending on which translation you're, re you're, reading, you're reading, you'll see comfort, encouragement, or assistance. This word comfort, encouragement, or assistance comes from an original Greek word that means, watch it, to build up verbally. To use words to build up the brethren. So God has the words that lifts our worry. What am I trying to tell you? That God utilizes the preaching and the teaching of his word to lift our worry. To rid us of anxiety. Listen, friends and brothers, sisters, our, our comrades and compadres in the Christian faith. Do not demean the teaching and the preaching of the word of God. Do not, do not have some of this thinking about the preaching of the word. And, and I'm not trying to get all into your home 
and stay long. <laughs> but watch this. Some people think that, that the man of God or that the teacher of God, that the preacher of God is just getting up and saying a bunch of words. God gave him some words last night and here he's just up talking to you. No, that's diminishing the word of God. Why am I trying to tell you that? Because God, right here from the passage, is letting us know he's giving us assistance. He's giving us strength. He's building us up through the preaching and the teaching. He lifts anxiety through his word. Someone has to come preaching and teaching, but someone has to come to listen to the preaching and the teaching. So God utilizes his word to lift our worry. God's word, the scripture, allows us, watch it, to ascertain strength in our worry. God's word, his scripture, gives us a broad picture of, watch it, encouragement, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what it really is when our worry is lifted, when we are rid of anxiety, when we have this eternal comfort. Guess what we are? We are encouraged. Acts chapter 13 and verse 15 gives us a picture of encouragement by looking at Brother Barnabas. Barnabas, whose name, which is a surname, Barnabas is not his real name. His real name is Joseph. Barnabas was a nickname, so to speak. Barnabas means the son of encouragement. What does that mean? It means that Barnabas, from Acts chapter 13 and verse 15, embodies encouragement. This is who Barnabas is. Reason being, watch it, not only uh, uh, was he encouragement, but why was he encouragement? Because literally, literally, skillfully, he can verbally use his words to encourage people. Historically speaking, Barnabas was the son of encouragement because he was a teacher, a professor by trade. He can use words to build people up or watch it set us at ease from worry. Right. And in a nutshell, in capsule form, ladies and gentlemen, I just gave you the responsibility of the preacher. I just gave you the responsibility of the man of God to use God's words to set the people of God at ease. When you come to worship, when you come to the man of God, when you come to, to different members in the body of Christ and you are at worry, you are anxious, something has offset you, you have trouble, you are looking for a word from the Lord to give you strength. Man. God gives his people the ability to be lifted from worry by his word. Watch it, not only through the preacher, but also through different members of the body of Christ. All of us have to watch our verbiage around one another because we are charged not to step on one another. We are charged to lift one another up. We have the, the ability through God's word to give assistance, to encourage and give one another eternal comfort. So watch this. Eternal comfort in verse 16 or assistance or encouragement means, watch it, that this is not a dying comfort, assistance, or encouragement. Our bodies die. Our bodies will not be here forever. But let me let you understand something. God's encouragement, God's comfort, God's assistance, assistance is not going to die. It's going to be here forever. God's love never fails. It never gives up. And it never runs out on us. Right. So watch it now. His encouragement, his assistance, his uh, comfort is not a dying one. It's a living one. But you have to understand the correlation between the two. What's the correlation? Watch it now. Stay with me. Indulge me for a few minutes. Watch it. Eternal comfort, assistance, or encouragement. Watch it comes from an eternal word. Why do I have eternal comfort or encouragement or assistance? Because God's word is eternal and that's where it comes from. You know what the scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22 to 25. I kind of condensed it for time but you will get the point. Watch what it says. Having purified your souls and obeyed the truth since you have been born again of imperishable seed through the living and abiding what? Word of God. All flesh is like grass. We're going to die. 
and the grass withers and falls away. Verse 25, watch what the Bible says. But the word of the Lord remains forever. And this is the good news that was preached to you. Watch it now. Eternal comfort, assistance, or encouragement comes from an eternal word. And watch it. This eternal word gives us eternal life after death. So what's the correlation now? Watch it. Anxiety can be, you can be rid of anxiety and worry. You can have eternal comfort, assistance, and, and uh, encouragement from the word of God, meaning that you have to get in the word of God. You have to read the word of God. You have to hear the word of God to be comforted. And once you are in the word of God, getting this comfort and encouragement, guess what happens, ladies and gentlemen? When this life is over, you're going to be with God forever. All right. Just like heaven isn't going to fade away, neither is God's word going to fade away, and his encouragement is going to reign supreme forever. Y'all still here this morning? Amen. I, I'm, not, I'm not boring you, am I? Don't answer that question. <laughs> Watch it now. Eternal life. The, the eternal encouragement that comes from God is communicative, ladies and gentlemen. It's communicative. What does that mean? That means I can communicate it to you. I can speak it to you. I can actually speak life into you. How do I speak life into you? Spiritual life. I use the word of God. Not Quentin Patterson's words. All right. God's words. So watch it now. For this lifting of worry, the word must be spoken. We have to speak the word of God if we're going to be encouraged. Don't, don't look for it any other way, even though it can come from other places. But listen, initially, your strength, spiritual strength, is coming from the word of God spoken. And watch it. It has to initially be spoken. And when do you stop speaking it? Never. You keep preaching it over and over and over and over and over and over again. It never stops. So if you want worry lifted, the word of God has to be spoken initially again and again and again. Amen. In verse 15, watch it. Paul says something about this. In our text in verse 15, he says, hold fast mm -hmm. to the tradition. What tradition is he talking about? It's right here in the context. The tradition is the teaching of the word of God. That's a tradition that must not be broken, ladies and gentlemen. The word of God being preached and taught to lift our worry cannot stop. It's a tradition that has to keep on going. Watch it. Do it and never stop. Now, I have a question. What is the word of God that lifts? I'm so glad you asked. That's one of the best questions you could have asked me this morning. I know what some of y'all are saying, Brother Pastor, we didn't ask you anything. Don't worry about that. I'm preaching, not you. All right. And I hear you. What's the word that lifts? And this is the word, ladies and gentlemen. You have hope. That's an earnest expectation of God being, or you being with God. You have patience. You have joy. Well, how is it that I have joy? I have joy in what happened, not in what's happening. Woo! Don't miss what I just said. You have joy. Why is it that you have joy? You have joy because what has happened on the cross and not what's happening around you. All right. So you have joy, ladies and gentlemen. You have a grounded faith. Where? In God's word. You have grace from God. And now that you have grace from God, you can have grace toward mankind. Not only do you have grace from God, you have mercy from God. And because you have mercy from God, you can have mercy on other people. You have been freed from sin's control, ladies and gentlemen. I just gave you a gift, a list rather, of gifts from God. And let the last time I checked, ladies and gentlemen, gifts that are received assures the, assures the person who is receiving the gift that the giver loves them. All right. Watch it. Watch what I said now. You, you have the word of God. I just gave you a word that uplifts. That's a, that's a list, rather, of gifts that God gives us, spiritual gifts. And the last time I checked, when you receive a gift from someone, it reassures you that the giver loves you. So God loves you, ladies and gentlemen. So what's the point? Don't give up. Don't give out. You'll never quit. And we will not doubt God. 
Because God takes our worry. And how does he do it? He gives us assistance through his word. So point number one, God gives us assistance through his word. But point number two, as we come to a conclusion, point number two is God gives us confidence. Watch it. God takes out a worry because point number two, he gives us confidence. Let's look at verse 17. Watch what he says. Comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Watch it now. This word confidence means firm trust in someone or something. Watch it, this word established in verse 17 comes from an original Greek word that means to become firm or stronger in belief. In Acts chapter 16 verse five, this is, this is mandatory to become stronger in belief. It, this is mandatory to become established in faith because watch what is said in Acts chapter 16 verse five, to the church become stronger in faith and do what? Increase in number. If we're going to increase in number, if we're going to increase spiritually, if we're going to grow numerically and spiritually, guess what the first thing is we have to do? Become established or stronger in faith. God's confidence is embedded in the believer and it causes us to be watching. Constant, persistent, and firm in faith. And these are mandatory if we're going to go forward, if we're going to grow, if we're going to be better Christians, if we're going to grow numerically, if we're going to grow spiritually, we have to become what? Constant in faith, persistent in faith, and firm in faith. This is what Brother Paul was telling them. And this was a good word for the Thessalonians. They needed God's confidence. Why? Because they were afraid of the trouble that they were facing, and Paul knew it. So watch what Paul does. He knew that they were facing trouble, so Paul prays that they become more established in faith. He didn't pray for more food for them. He didn't pray for more finances. He didn't pray for more of these physical things. Not that I'm saying that that's bad. Don't misunderstand me. A lot of times when we don't have those things, it's a matter of firmness in faith. Right. See, the first thing that you have to do is understand you have to be firm in faith before you grow in any area. Well, watch the idea. Paul prays uh, for their establishment. He knew that the Thessalonians needed firm fixity in faith. So watch what Paul prays for. He prays that you live in abundance. He prays for their consolation. He prays for hope. He prays for grace. He prays for perseverance. And I don't know if you've been paying attention on Wednesday night or not, but for the last month or so, uh, we've been talking about perseverance. Four or five lessons about perseverance from one verse of scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. We spent five weeks on perseverance. And what did that help us to understand? Paul was addressing the same situation in 1 Corinthians 15 that he's dealing with here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. What is that? He's addressing confidence, establishment in faith. Watch what he says. They needed, watch it, courage. They need assistance. They need establishment. They need confidence right here in our passage. They needed the same thing in 1 Corinthians 15. He just says it another way. Watch what he says. Always be steadfast. Always be what? Immovable. Always be in the state of what? Abounding. That's what he was telling them. That's confidence. In order to persevere and move forward, ladies and gentlemen, you have to be in this position. Not only for this to come over to them uh, uh, through their understanding, but they had to work some things out as well. It's good to understand Thessalonians and us as well. We have to understand in our thinking that we have to be firm in faith, but then it shows up in our actions. And one is not without the other. The Thessalonians and us today must learn true comfort means being established, watching, 
in the word, in the work, and in the ways of God. The more we immense ourselves watching in God's word, in his work, and in his way, the more we will be comforted or established. The tribulation we face can cause us to lose grip, ladies and gentlemen. And that very moment, just like the Thessalonians, when we face tribulation, what should we do? Refocus. That's going to the word. Regroup. That's getting to work. And watch it. Regrip. That's getting back under the ways of God. In good or bad, watch it. True religion is doing what? Working things out. Not only thinking it, not only speaking it, but ladies and gentlemen, we have to have action behind our thought process. The crux of the matter is this, ladies and gentlemen. As a nation, we are at this ease. Emotions are running high because of the unknown. Fear sets in because of what we do know. Attrition sets in and we feel less powerful day by day. We feel as though we are not functioning at full capacity. Boredom becomes a priority because we can't go to work. Not even to mention, watch it, the trouble that life brings outside of COVID-19. Loss is reigning supreme. Family is gone. Friends are gone. Finances are gone. Food is gone. Shelter gone. Health gone. Sanity and so much more has left us. What's my point this morning, ladies and gentlemen? Smack dab in the middle of this dis ease. Guess what? God still takes our word. Amen. Because we have a wonderful word. How does God take our worry? Number one, he gives us assistance through his word. And number two, he gives us confidence from his word, his work, and his way. All right. God takes our worry. Let's pray together. Lord, we come before your throne, humbled and amazed. Your greatness overshadows every idol of this age. For all the treasures of this world, Lord, cannot replace the greatest joy of knowing you and walking in your ways. We will worship you because there is none beside you. With this being said this morning, infuse our hearts today. Fill us up with your word, your work, and your way. In the strong name of Jesus we pray. Amen. When the Savior call, I will answer. When he call for me, I will hear. And when the Savior call, I will answer. Or oh, I'll be somewhere and listening for my name. Or oh, I'll be somewhere listening I'll be somewhere oh listening I'll be somewhere and listening for my name oh I'll be somewhere and listening I'll be somewhere and listening I'll be somewhere oh listening for my name This is now time for communion. And I'll be reading it here and we'll take the phone. 1 Corinthians, the chapter 11. I'll be reading verses 23 to 30. I'll begin with the 26th verse for the Bible gives the warning, and the warning reads as follows. For all to eat this bread and drink this cup, and do so the Lord's death until he come. Wherefore, we shall eat this bread and drink the cup of the Lord, unworthy shall be guilty in the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat that bread and drink that cup. But he that drinketh unworthily, he that drinketh damn, damaged himself, not to discern the Lord's body. For this cause, many wicked sitting among you, and many sleep. 23rd verse. 
For receiving the Lord was also delivered unto you to the Lord Jesus Christ, which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he gave me thanks, he broke and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broke for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup, and stopped saying, This is a cup of the new testament in my blood. This you thee, this you thee is often drinking in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father, thank you for sending your son that sacrificed himself for our sins, asking to bless the bread which represents your son's body, and in the same manner, bless the fruit of the vine, which is represents the blood of the New Testament. Yeah. Bless us that we may partake of the bread and fruit of the vine in a manner which be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight. Giving love towards you and love towards one another. In Christ's name, so I'll say, Amen. Amen. Restore my spirit, Lord, I need restore. Oh, my heart is weary. Please help me, dear Lord. Oh, I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, renew my faith. Oh, restore my soul. This is now time for our offering, and I'll be reading your heritage from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and we read verses 1 and 2. Now, concerning the collection for the saints, and again, order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every man store, and God has Christ with them, there be no gathering when I come. Let us pray. Father, I thank you once again for granting us this opportunity to give back a portion that you have blessed with the Father. Father, thank you for our jobs and means for us to support our family and the works of the church. At this time, Father, let's bless us offer and receive, may you identify thy kingdom. In your son Jesus' name, we we'll all say, Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Most kind and righteous God, which art in heaven, fathers again, we are thankful for this opportunity to be able to come out to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we pray that the things that we have said and done is well pleasing in your sight and that you get all the glory. We ask, Father, that you would just continue helping the Father be with this entire nation. We ask, Father, that you would heal us. Father, now we ask a special blessing upon those in the household of faith. Help us, Father, to continue to trust you. We ask, Father, that you would give us strength and courage to continue, Father, to win souls for you, even in times like this. Father, we are eternally grateful. Forgive us for our sins. It's in Christ's name I pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. Amen.